Hello, welcome back to the channel. This is the second video in my Tassiomancy series. If you missed the first video, in which I discussed the basic supplies needed to read tea leaves, you can find that video on the Tassiomancy playlist right here on my channel. Before we proceed, I would like to clarify that there are many different ways to read the leaves, and today I am just sharing one approach. So let's get started. Once you have gathered your supplies, you are ready to brew a pot of tea. It's important to remember that you should not use a strainer. Simply pour simmering hot water directly over the loose tea in your teapot. Be sure that your pot does not have a built-in strainer or a filter of any kind within its spout. Here's another tip to ensure that you have plenty of leaves to read. When you add the tea to your pot, save a pinch to place directly into your cup. So I had allowed my pot of tea uh, to steep for um, just a few minutes, that's usually all it takes, less than five typically, uh, but it can depend on the kind of tea that you're using. And I poured a bit in the cup, and um, I now realize that it needs a little more tea, I think, so we're going to add a little bit more from the pot so that I have a nice full cup of tea to enjoy. Notice how the tea mostly sinks to the bottom of the cup. That's where the sediment is situated. Some of the leaves, when you drink it, will uh, go into your mouth. Uh, so hopefully you're not overly sensitive um, to that. It's just to be expected. And um, it's pretty simple to avoid the bulk of the tea and leave it uh, to rest on the bottom of your cup. Once the tea is cool enough to drink, simply enjoy it as you normally would. Sweeten it if you like, and if there's a particular issue or topic that you wish to gain insight about through your reading, you should think about it while you sip. This works well when reading for yourself, and when reading for someone else, encourage them to do the same thing. This helps to set the intention. As you finish your tea, be sure to leave a small amount of liquid in the cup. This will help the leaves move around more freely. Now it's time to invert the cup. Place the saucer face down on top of the cup. Holding both the cup and saucer firmly together, flip them over like this. Position the handle of the teacup so that it is pointing at yourself. From there, rotate the cup for three full turns in a clockwise direction. This can make a scraping, screeching kind of noise with some cups and saucers, so be warned. After you have completed three full rotations, which can take a while to complete, gently tap on the cup three times. Now you are ready to return the cup to an upright position. Most of the liquid has drained onto the saucer and you are left with the tea leaves. This is where the fun begins as you discover the symbols and patterns in your cup. At this point, just take a moment to soften your gaze Allow your vision to slip slightly out of focus and just soak in the imagery before you. I'm going to quote Karen Ward directly here, uh, looking at the notes that I took uh, in my tea leaf reading class. So Karen said, take your time looking inside the cup. Look over the symbols and signs, bottom, sides, and towards the rim, including any leaves that are over the rim of the cup. Try to use a soft focus, like looking at a puzzle as you look at the cup. Turn it around. Look at all sides, 
allow your intuition to flow freely. Notice what jumps out first. Look for heavy clumps of leaves or sparse with two or three leaves. Look for a balance of leaves. This can give a general overview of what's going on in your life or the sitter's life at this time. So first, just read the cup as it is. And then if you would like a little more structure to the reading, you could do, um, we'll start with a simple past, present, future reading. And you just divide the cup in your mind. You see it in thirds. So the very bottom is the past. The middle third, as you're moving up closer to the top, is present. And toward the top of the cup and the rim is future. So any images that fall or primarily fall in one of those regions can be attributed to that time period, past, present, or future. And at this point, you look for symbols in the teacup, such as um, natural symbols, animals, objects, people. Often, um, readers will see letters emerge and numbers, and those can be significant as well. You can look for shapes or objects in the leaves. Um, you can choose your own symbolism and use your own symbolic language, or um, you can rely on some of the well-known tea leaf reading symbols. There are lists and dictionaries, and I will try to provide uh, some information in a future video about that. Uh, and you could have your own book that's not particularly about uh, tea leaf symbolism, but just symbolism in general. Although I will say that that is not the traditional way to do it. Um, usually you're going to rely on your own or those commonly associated in tea leaf readings in particular. Once you become accustomed to seeing images as silhouettes, it will become easier to spot them. Gradually, a story will begin to emerge. If you get stuck, try taking a break from studying those dark shapes made by the leaves and consider the shape of the white spaces, that negative space between them. In the next video, I will talk more about symbols and I will share some suggestions and resources uh, for building up your symbolic vocabulary for tea leaf reading. And I'll also share a different kind of reading that you can try. See you soon.